and I'm out, and I'm trying to get the Children's Hospital of Miami to make her like a poster child. She's such a beautiful child, and she's done so well. Uh, but it's also been interesting, you know, that paper where we talked about using arginine to block, block the uptake of lysine in the nervous system, designing the formula that's called glutarate. It is the best formula for GA1. It's the only one that's been studied in newborns. It's the only one that has been shown to be effective in newborns. We studied it for years before we published that paper. And this is what data looks like. So this is the lysine to arginine ratio. Lysine concentration divided by the arginine. And this is a calculated uptake of lysine into the brain. If you are normal, this is what your values look like. That's the normal range. If you're like Steve and Nikki sometimes, and just eat as much protein as you want to, you have these very high transport values, very high lysine to arginine ratios. All these arrows and crosses and dots there are data from Violetta. It shows it was two years of successful management of her disease using the glutarate formula to maintain low uptake of lysine into the brain and a high lysine to arginine ratio. And we quantify these things, we calculate them and then make these graphs. And it's really put some science into the disease that wasn't there before we had this idea. Uh, and it is the way to treat lateric acid treatment. Single case, but other cases too. I mean, we did these case by case in Lancaster County. Uh, Strauss came up with a spreadsheet that we used to calculate the lysine uptake in the brain. It's a very uh, insightful uh, way to treat the disease. And it took us from 67% success rate with one third failure rate, which was terrible, to nearly 100% success rate if people stay on the formula. In 59. Can I have five minutes? Yeah, well, For I don't guess? know. How long is Chuck have? Chuck's on next. Three hours. You're on next. How many minutes am I allowed? <laughs> <laughs> Three, Three hours. Well, this is a good introduction for Chuck and Dick. Yeah, Chuck is going to talk some about propionic acidemia, so I don't have to belabor. Are you? We'll find out. Okay. So, you know, I take care of a group of children with propionic acidemia, and some people say, well, you know, that's an easy disorder. That, that's a benign form of propionic acidemia. But I don't think so. And it's just based upon one case. It's this case. The first infant I saw in 1997 uh, was one of the most difficult. Uh, when I saw her, she had a dilated cardiomyopathy, had a fibrotic heart. Ultimately, she died, and we did an autopsy in her heart. She was completely fibrosed. And she had also completely wiped out her basal ganglion. She had severe dystonia and seizures. Now, she was undiagnosed. I, I think the father decided he didn't want to do newborn screening, and so she wasn't screened. She was missed because of the decision. And I, to be honest, I don't know whether it was the parent's decision or whether it was the midwife's decision, but anyway, she was missed with newborn screening. Came into Hershey Hospital with a dilated cardiomyopathy, very uh, sick. I happened to be there seeing another patient. They said, we just had this girl and has a big heart, and, and she has ketones in the urine. What do you think she could have? And, take long to find that she had propionic acidemia. And then she died uh, about a, six months or a year later. And right before she died, her brother was born. He's now 21 years old. He has never been in a hospital. He has gone to school with other children. He's never had a seizure. If he walked in this room, other than being dressed like an Amish woman, you wouldn't think anything was the matter with him. This is, the, this is the way we learn. Right. And we have over the years tried many different things. We've developed a formula that's called Procitric that we're using, that we're studying. <coughs> but I will tell you, in all honesty, Procitric does very well for the nervous system. We have good cognitive outcomes. Kids are going to school with other children. Uh, in our group of 28 patients on this formula, nobody's had a seizure. 
So neurologically, we seem to be controlling the disease, but we do see cardiomyopathy. There's something we are missing. The cardiomyopathies so far have not caused any deaths in the treated patients. They have high end diastolic volumes. They have a dilated heart. That's about 90 percentile. It's not terribly dilated most of the time. They do respond to therapy. They can recover. Their beta natriuretic peptide, which is the hormone released by the heart, does go up as part of their disease natural history. Those with propionic acidemia, do you ever monitor beta natriuretic peptides? That's something that is part of your routine. It's a good way. It's cheaper than an echo. It takes you a few hours to get a result. It's a very interesting heart uh, cardiac response to dilation and stress. It's one way to monitor cardiomyopathy. And we've done that, we've tried many different things with this procitric formula to enhance uh, the function of the heart, but there is something we're missing. And Dr. Vendetti and I both are trying very hard to find out what that something is because of the 28 patients who are on therapy, none have died of cardiomyopathy or arrhythmia. But in the untreated group, that is about another 50 patients or 60 patients who have the same mutation, same genetic background, there have been, 10% of them have died. Of those deaths, three have been arrhythmias. We don't know whether it's associated with long QT, QTC, but most everybody develops long QTC. Um, but we do know the deaths are sudden, and when you look at the hearts after somebody's died suddenly, uh, often the structure of the heart is quite normal. There's something we don't understand about perchronic acidemia and cardiomyopathy. I'm gonna, Rest at that. Make sure Dr. <laughs> Vendetti has plenty of time to go through it. I just uh, he could talk for uh, days. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to give you uh, I want to give you an idea of what we're doing. We work with these interesting populations. You know, this the population. Victor McCusick built his career of working with the same people I work with, and John Hosteller is a sociologist who introduced McCusick to these populations. Uh, John's book is still one of the best sociologic studies of the Amish community. John was on the board of the original clinic in Lancaster. Um, he and McCusick worked together and published this book in 1978 about the medical genetic studies of the Amish. Uh, John grew up on this farm. So that photograph there is looking from where, well, I guess John as an Amish boy used to plow that field. And this uh, building is being built on his homestead. It was given to us by another Amishman, and I didn't know it. It was John Hostetler's place until uh, one of his nephews told me, well, you know, that's where John lived. He came back there to do his PhD in sociology at State College, and his wife died there in childbirth. So, a lot of stories. So this is a group of guys putting up what's called a timber frame building. Uh, that's what it looks like when it's finished. Those are all hemlock timbers. It's old growth hemlock that an Amishman had on his log yard and said nobody wanted the hemlock, so he just gave it to us. Hmm. And uh, then Eve Reel's group, Reel Construction from Lancaster, um, took the architectural design. It's designed by a real architect who does medical offices. And that's what it looks like a little further along. It's got a standing seam metal roof that will last longer than I will. Uh, this is what it looks like from the other side. We have six and a half acres, and we can actually, uh, you know, we can have an orchard and things like that. We can also land a helicopter there if we need to. So we're really trying to build some resources here to take care of people within the community that have these diseases. And it's meant to be a family practice for those who have genetic conditions. My hope would be to step back and do more laboratory work, uh, work on the biochemical genetic disorders that and metabolomics that I've always uh, liked to work on and let some younger people come in and deal with some of the unusual diseases we see there. Uh, hopefully it'll be finished by the end of the year. Thanks very much.